So first of all, thanks for, for coming. Um, the idea of the talk is basically um, to share some experiences. Uh, the other day we were talking with some uh, people from the Debian uh, publicity. Uh, and we came to the same conclusion that basically even though the, the, the topic is related to Debian, um, like um, could be related to could be related to other uh, Linuxes. The idea is basically to have to get a perception of how big the project is, or how um, or, or what the impact of your work is. So basically, we work in a company that builds satellites. Um, my name is Eric. He's a teen. Teen. Uh, when you think in a satellite, you really don't think about stuff like this. Which, uh, in fact, those are satellites. They are classified as nanosatellites, which means, uh, in comparison to something that weighs between one uh, and one uh, thousand and four hundred kilograms, is uh, really ridiculous. Those uh, weigh two kilograms. So basically, the company we work for is called Satellogic. Um, it started building satellites like uh, three years ago. Yeah, yeah, three years ago, something. Um, we already launched it two prior to prior to the satellite we are going to like dedicate the whole talk about uh, that were called Capitan Beto and Manolito. Those are them. Um, those satellites orbit at six hundred more or less, six hundred kilometers, so they are cataloged as, as uh, low orbit satellites. Um, that's because basically commercial satellites or commercial grade satellites uh, usually are like 2,000, 2,000 kilometers? Yeah. Yeah, they no. are. No, right. what are? Yeah, well, they are okay. way, way. 20,000. 20,000 kilometers, yeah. yeah, a little bit more Legio. than that. Um, so basically the idea of these two satellites, which are, as I mentioned, two kilograms and 10, uh, 10 and 20 centimeters, <coughs> or watts uh, average consu consumption, uh, power consumption, they are really very small. Uh, just something like a little bigger than this, uh, but square. They have th those uh, form factors because they are prepared basically to be launched from, uh, we are going to show the, the images later, from satellites that deliver like 50 or 70 of them uh, in a single flight. Basically the idea to test stuff. Uh, for example, that's the first one we uh, shipped in July 2015. Um, and this one was a little bit more uh, advanced in terms of the, the parts that were, sorry, not advanced. They were basically a spin-off on the Bush. original design. Um, so the idea behind the, the launching was to see whether a company have the, capac the capacity, the, the technology, the means, and, um, and basically to see whether it was really feasible to do uh, technology. Um, the, com the company is radicated in Argentina, but uh, we have like, quite a couple of, of people from uh, a different part of the world. Um, so in this satellite, which is Manolito, uh, some of the components were uh, replaced with uh, things built in-house. So the idea is that um, 40 years old uh, space industry works like well-proof technology. So to be well-proof, you have to first have an experience or have spend some time on, in the space which means 10 years iterations because satellites really tend, tend to take from four to six years, uh, four, five, six to 10 years uh, to be designed, built and, and shipped. Um, the idea basically with the company is, uh, well, in this case was to replace some components. Between others, uh, there was a camera, some magnet torques that use it to basically use uh, the magnetic field of the Earth to grab from it and to uh, um, help me to uh, control the attitude. Yeah, to basically there are several components that control the attitude of the satellite. This particular one uh, is like one of the forces that tends to uh, turns the satellite in, di in different directions. They are component um, between the camera, magnet turkeys, reaction wheels sonar partners uh, and summer stuff will basically replace it in-house. 
But yet the beer was to come. I mean, this is uh, two kilograms. Um, maybe it will be, uh, they are cataloged as uh, nanosatellites, but uh, they are basically uh, experiments to play with. Uh, if you were in the talk with, uh, uh, I remember it was Bidale. He mentioned he was basically going to, sh to deliver. He was building one of these. He was referring to literally one of these. So Tita was a satellite uh, that jumps a little bit farther. It's considered a small satellite. It's, it's no longer like <clears throat> nano satellite. Um, so as, as I mentioned, the idea of uh, the company differing from different companies doing space, uh, um, space observation of the Earth uh, is that it's based on release, release often, release uh, early. Uh, so the regular space industry works on like uh, 40 years uh, uh, cycles. It's uh, like uh, the technology improves little by little. It's uh, uh, almost uh, the dimensions, the, the, as I mentioned, the, the weight of, of a regular satellite, uh, which is not this one, is like you know, something like this weighs uh, a ton. It's basically between 50 and 100 million dollars to, to get uh, built. Some of them are even like near the, the two or, or 500 million dollars. And uh, they are prepared to have a life expectancy of 10 years. So basically they are built to last for you know, longer times uh, than these kind of uh, approaches. But the idea of the company is basically to build something that you know about, to, to you learn, uh, and to improve and release faster, way faster in terms of uh, time. Basically, is uh, so this is Tita. This is an engineering model that is digitalized. I don't know if I can see it. Yeah. Uh, it took between, uh, so it was launched literally one year ago, uh, at the previous DECONF was, uh, um, was uh, we were just releasing it. Uh, it costed like 250 in terms of building. So those are like, to have an idea, comparison to 100 million, a significant difference. Um, $250,000 compared to 100 yeah. or, sorry, 100 or even more uh, to be one of those. Um, so as I mentioned, the designing, the building, the engineering uh, took uh, eight months approximately um, to build two of them because basically on the industry you cannot uh, build the software and, and, well, generally speaking, build the software or build the hardware and later uh, um, improve some stuff without testing it. It's like regular software in terms of uh, you basically push into a, a test environment uh, or pre-production or QA, whatever. Um, so basically we built two satellites uh, in eight months, the engineering model, which is called Rhodesia, which is called, I, I don't hear my feedback. No, there, uh, which is called Rhodesia. Um, the first time I saw the shipping box, which is <laughs> that one, I thought of this image. I don't know if anyone recognizes it. The image is not really very good in the, the projection. Uh, anyway, um, so meanwhile in Russia, uh, the satellite basic, so you can launch satellites from uh, several parts of the world. Basically the difference is uh, the price. Um, you can, uh, nowadays, commercially speaking, you can launch from uh, China, Russia, France, I mean European Union. Uh, yeah, and the US. Well, the difference being like 10 times uh, between, you know, between them. Um, so we launched from Russia. Uh, this, are, this is part of our crew. Um, there you have uh, Hera, which is our CTO. You have Vila, which is our uh, payload engineer, and Karsa here. He's a mission and power um, engineer. Um, they were preparing their, they, they were unboxing, unloading the, the satellites from uh, the shipping box. I'm going to show just more images to, so to have an idea. These are power cells, um, more power cells. Well, we are going to see more images. Uh, so this is basically unloading the satellite on the, on the 
space head model. So, so these satellites are uh, basically loaded, loaded on these things. That's uh, the head of a like average rocket from uh, from Russia. It was actually used uh, as a uh, how would they call it? Never mind. It's a it was basically a missile a uh, couple of years before that. Yeah, inter inter intercontinental missile. So this is basically how the satellite is positioned. We can see very here. So basically, this is uh, you can see there. At the, at the top corner, different boxes. Those are the launchers. You get the satellites in there, and you see there's a small raven, red raven there. Those are basically the, the remote before launch ravens. So they are checks like uh, those, those boxes are literally ejected by, uh, by, um, by a powder charge. Um, so you don't really want to, <laughs> you don't really want to by mistake eject them. In. Uh, before getting lunch. So they have these safety things uh, called remote before flight uh, tax. So uh, that's the distribution of uh, the satellite internally. That's the rocket head, so you have a per perception. Uh, this one was, a, I don't really know how to pronounce it, it's different, whatever, uh, space head model. So those are payloads, uh, that's, so you have, a, so to have an idea, that's basically a large uh, footprint satellite. That's, those are regular satellites that uh, are involving communications and, and traditional uh, uh, Earth imaging. So uh, as I mentioned, the launch was a little bit before DECONF last year. We have that crazy idea that, uh, which, which ended work. up, yeah, which didn't work because uh, we were like, uh, just after the launch, and we, we were very excited with the telemetry and whatever, we were thinking of, yeah, let's go like a photo group, and let's do the, the, the uh, how do you say it, Swir Swirl? Debian Swirl uh, in the floor, uh, and let's wait for a, a satellite pass so we take a picture from the, uh, uh, it, was, it was a little bit uh, too, uh, how can I say it? Yeah, well, it was a little bit crazy. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to show you why later. So um, the, the satellite process of getting lunch is very stressful. Um, um, basically, uh, the components that are built into the satellites are, uh, have a scales of micrometers precisions, like the telescope. So uh, a lot of uh, testing uh, is required for um, a prior to get launched. Um, there's also a large budget of tests scheduled at the um, release of the satellite from the, the launching platform. Um, basically, once the satellite gets launched, it has to go through a uh, process of uh, um, getting sync into the, the desired trajectory. It's a very large uh, amount of, uh, of calculation. Uh, so the idea is, uh, once you get lunch, you get like a black curtain. It's something that you have to wait uh, in the corner of the, of the table waiting for someone or some uh, uh, entities uh, in a government or whatever to tell you the lunch uh, has been really successfully performed. Otherwise, you are, you know, you're not going to see it. It's too small to be served from Earth. It's not like the International Space Center uh, station. So it's uh, basically you, you will release and just wait. Um, so luckily enough, uh, we have like uh, um, amateur uh, ham radios all around the world. Uh, one of them, 30 minutes after deploying the, the satellites, TITA, from the launcher, uh, saw the, the telemetry beacon. That's basically it. So it's basically like a string notation of uh, I'm satellite, if you see me, uh, drop me an email in this direction. This is literally this, the string you see on the floor. Um, so by the time it got released, we were like, uh, so as I, as I said, the, after 30 minutes of uh, getting lunch, this uh, guy at Japan uh, saw the, the telemetry. He saw it like with 20 mi 24 minutes up time, that's UPT, it's up time. Uh, so basically they hold the sequence of launching deploying the antennas uh, for communication, everything 
was in those four minutes, and just after it was uh, it got released, the, this person was uh, lucky enough able to to hear it. Those are the, the musician. You can see Tin in here. That's in. Um, that's the lunch party. Uh, we also have asados too. I don't know if you know what asados is. They are great. <laughs> no, those are not barbecues. Never mind. So, basically, what's about <coughs> Tita? Hello, hello. And what's Debian about Tita? So, what about Tita and Debian? Uh, this is the heart, uh, the Tita's heart. Uh, Tita has two sets of computers, uh, one in charge of navigation and communication protocol, and the other in charge of mission and payload. Sorry. <coughs> well, in fact, has two hearts. Uh, from the heart purpose, purpose perspective, well, every Torino, that's uh, board is called Torino. Torino 2K, the first one was uh, called Torino. I don't know why. Um, every Torino has a Cortex R4 with a lock step and a set of six Overo drumsticks that you can see there, that uh, in yeah, vertical. vertical orientation. Uh, uh, they has uh, they have a, a Cortex A8. I, I, thank you. An Ethernet switch, and the rest of the satellite is compounded by a high resolution Earth observation telescope camera and a couple of macro black and white and color cameras. Uh, and the attitude instrumental, uh, like uh, a star tracker, is not there. Need to simulate flight. No. Uh, reaction wheel, gyroscopes, and magnet torque. Well. Uh, as we, as he said, Tita was launched on 19 July uh, last year. Uh, while the System D discussion was getting warm, we put System D on Debian uh, on six Overo, on six Cam6, and launched them. Uh, <laughs> just, just to make. Uh, to make a note, we basically put it and ported it. It wasn't like uh, uh, safe enough. So we basically put it there and release it on the space. System D was a uh, key at many of, of uh, many core services. Was was a key at many core services because it allowed uh, allowed to, uh, us to handle recovery automatically uh, on service expected to be eventually run. Well, I am reading. And we shortened that the, the booting time from 30 seconds to uh, less than 10 seconds, which is uh, really critical on the satellite operation. Uh, well, what, we, what we use uh, from the Debian uh, infrastructure is a chain building cross compiling, uh, GBP, Git Build Package, uh, Workflow, and PBuilder. PBuilder, uh, a software deployment tool. Uh, we are resting on, on DPKG, robust platform, and state machine for deploying software. Uh, we needed to minimize uh, new upstream releases, uh, releases footprint, because we have a very, very low bandwidth. Uh, so on top of the Debian dev format, we built something Similar to Delta Dev, I don't know. If Which is present on the archive. Yeah, except that DD patch is optimized for non-binary stuff. Uh, this is uh, the workflow. Uh, as you can see, the operation there, the operation guys, uh, upload the diff. Uh, it, the that's a satellite link. Yeah, that's a, that's a, the green arrow is the satellite link. Uh, they put the diff in there, uh, then it uh, trigger uh, an attended upgrade that which calls DD patch with the previous dev in the git diff. Actually, uh, uh, the diff is uh, is used. Uh, we use uh, git in there, and then generate the new dev and deploy of six of gam six. So I don't know if you can understand this, but. So basically, the idea, so. the idea is um, uh, we just push diff. Um, that 
DD package, which is uh, something we built on house and we will, uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, put in the archive. It's uh, getting, it's, it's really too simple, but uh, the, the consequences for us are, are huge. So basically, we patch a dev from uh, the original, uh, sorry, the previous version with the diff, with a git diff, uh, and yeah, uh, actually, to, to build the diff, uh, you have the old dev and the new dev, the previous dev, the new dev, and you unpack them and then do the git diff. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> Just you apply the patch. It's really the simple. Source. And it, then compress the diff. But this allows us basically to um, um, lower down the, 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 the footprint of a package from uh, dev delta. Uh, sorry, delta dev the, uh, up from 10k or 15k to even less than 1k, yeah. which was great because uh, so one of the things with the link is that um, you would so the satellite spins at 7,000 kilometers per hour is basically like uh, 24 seven kilometers per second or something like that. I don't yeah know. yeah it's seven very very yeah it's very eight. quick so uh, it's very fast so. Once it goes through um, the ground stations, we have uh, one in the North Pole that belongs to Norway, uh, at uh, Svalbard, um, which is great because since we have polar um, yeah, orbit. uh, orbits, uh, we, every 197 minutes we get uh, telemetry and communications from there. Uh, but also we have uh, uh, communication uh, ground stations on, on, on Buenos Aires, on Tortuguitas. Uh, that once you get a, a session for, for a transmission, you really want to get the most out of it because that's uh, basically one of the, the parts of the, the, the orbit in which you upload commands and you then get the, the whole task processes and the images. And, and you have tw uh, 10 minutes. Yeah, so basically you have to really, really go for it. So one of the funny things we uh, came through, the release process, as, as I mentioned before, is, um, sorry, the release cycle of, of TITA was uh, eight months. Those eight months include basically the building, literally building pieces of the satellite, engineering, mechanics, uh, getting you know, the telescope, uh, uh, the thermal protections, the jo joining all the pieces together, the, the, the integration process, the shaking. As I mentioned, the, the process of launching a satellite is very stressful in terms of the, me the mechanic parts, so it has to go through a process that you call shaker. Uh, which basically shakes the satellite uh, at, at three, four, five Gs, something yeah. like that. It's crazy. You, you see it moving and it's, uh, you know, remember, you have like nanometer precision on, the, on a telescope. Uh, um, and, you know, you see that thing shaking and it's uh, like very scary. So as I mentioned, the, the whole process is very rushy. I mean, uh, even though it's eight months, the, th those eight months includes uh, everything in the process, even the, uh, the design of the software is going to run there. Uh, one we were <laughs> so one of the funny experiences we were through is that uh, you may know it as uh, cluster SSH. Uh, for us, it's uh, internally called as mm. parallel breaker. Yeah, parallel breaker. So the idea <laughs> was something like, uh, well, this is actually very funny in terms of uh, the, the, the experience we, we went through, but it's extremely similar to, to Apollo 13 uh, Odyssey, I mean, uh, making a comparison. So you can see here, that's basic, those are basically the six overs. Overs are um, these things. Those things, which are literally the, the pieces that have Debian on it. Um, so those things have, um, and as, I, as he said, uh, those are, um, so you can see the switching area. Uh, there, those are two different boards that communicate between each other through a backplane, and you have a switching for uh, Ethernet. So basically, they have IP stack uh, on top of them. And so what happened is that um, we were. What, what were you doing that day? You were uploading software for the camera or something? No, I, I just cleaned up. <laughs> so the he last was, clean. Yeah. So he was basically <laughs> doing some. Yeah, the last clean, literally. <laughs> uh, he was basically performing some cleaning operations. Uh, we were to literally ship the satellite to the shaking facility uh, uh, 
uh, the next day. Uh, so he basically, so that's cluster SSH, basically opens uh, the console there, the, the right top. You type commands there and it gets uh, split on, on, the, on all your, your terminals. So he plays, uh, you connect from the satellite to, sorry, from the computer to the satellite through, through something that is called umbilical cable, which is uh, like, you know, umbilical. Uh, it basically is a cable that you unplug once uh, the satellite is, is shipped, but uh, it emulates uh, communication as you were, as if you were with, uh, with an antenna. The idea was that, uh, and this, this link is really fast in comparison to, to uh, the real link that happens on, on, on Earth orbitation, but it even has, it even emulates latency, because, I mean, you have to have uh, behavior that are reproducible on Earth. So the latency in this situation was something like, a, you might see there at the, at the top corner that there's just very small amount of lines, that's basically, uh, that's basically RM slash RMFF from uh, the, the, the root. I didn't know safe RM. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely you have to install safe R RM. Uh, it's uh, less than 1K or, or something, and it's going to definitely save, for example, a satellite. <laughs> so basically the thing was that uh, a little delay on the screen made him to you know, push enter, uh, while the other didn't refresh, and he went through something like that, which basically started to delete everything from the hard drives. So you have to f take into account that, uh, as I mentioned, these satellites, you put it into something that shakes, and those are not uh, hard drives you can you know, unplug and replace and put something else. Literally, they're glued together with a, a high uh, density epoxy. Uh, epoxy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, as you, as you can see there, uh, once he break, he control break there at the first line, uh, there was no LS. Um, so um, there were just a little bit amount of directories. Uh, some of them were like documentations, which were useful, uh, uh, sorry, useless. And <laughs> the opposite. Yeah, the opposite. <laughs> but, and, the, and this is the, the part of, uh, that correlates with the Apollo thing. There was a QMO, a static, a QMO statically compiled on the server, which... For, for bootstrapping. Yeah, for bootstrapping, which had activated and compiled debugging remote functions. So this crazy guy called Phil that works uh, for us, uh, he's French. Yeah. I, I don't want to make any relationship between you know, <laughs> being French and anything. But this guy basically built, uh, well, he found the part where he could uh, drop at AirSync from the GDV. He basically opened GDV remotely. Um, that, that's it. Um, from a different overall, which, which was the one that really went through the command successfully. Um, and basically he recovered the whole thing from a remote GDV platform. Basically he uh, loaded the, uh, 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 yeah, he loaded the AirSync so he could remotely uh, load files from there to through uh, GDB on G, uh, on debugging. It was crazy. So basically, he's said, Jim. Uh, that was funny. Uh, actually, his uh, this experience took. Uh, I summarize it, but they took like uh, 16 hours. Uh, they eventually went through all the different possibilities of you know breaking the thing and uh, and replacing. Uh, luckily enough, uh, we had QMO there. Anyway, that was a very funny experience once you go through it. Not, uh, no. Yeah, so, he, so one of the crazy things is that he was the guy that did that. <laughs> he ran that common. <laughs> well, well, yeah. So um, another crazy experience um, was that, uh, well, we have operations, right? So we have people that uh, have uh, a, a list of tasks to go through and to check. Uh, like a regular operation guy in a, in a uh, IT company. So this guy, uh, one day, uh, let's call it Facundo. Um, so Facundo was having his nice tea at their office, uh, and he was reviewing, you know, the lastest activity from TITA, the satellite, and uh, 
he wasn't really even close to, you know, imagine what he was going to be uh, uh, put through. So that's basically one of the images from uh, uh, downloaded from the satellite. So at, at the first glance, it appears like, you know, it's a regular image, it's a black and, and white image, but what's that? I mean, that's not really, so from the orbiting perspective, that's not actually a satellite. So we basically went through three hours or, or maybe more putting names to that thing. <laughs> um, so eventually we realized that uh, we were going to put watermarks on that image so we don't get that image uh, split all over the internet. We wanted to know what the hell what that, that was. Uh, so what happened is that the CEO and this guy basically uploaded in a very hidden way, like uploading EXA, this image, like uh, three months uh, before this guy downloaded. And eventually this guy got this image and everyone in the company started to think this image was real, but it was in fact, you know, pushed from the from uh, Earth and eventually downloaded from the satellite. Uh, everyone was thinking, you know, we are getting invaded or something that's uh, the beginning of the end and whatever. So um, we do have a lot of metrics. Um, so uh, uh, we basically have a, like, uh, I don't remember exactly the number. We have literally tons of, uh, of, uh, of metrics per minute. We don't even store them because otherwise we're going to, you know, destroy uh, the internet storage. Uh, some of the information is later uh, queued from that download. Uh, we use tags also. Those, if you are, um, if you know uh, uh, Grafana, you can see those red lines that are tags. That's basically telemetry. Uh, you can see temperature there. You can see uptime. Uh, so these things have uh, something that are called RTC. So that they are devices to, that have their own power to basically get a clock running, even though the satellite is uh, off, for example, because of power reasons. Uh, satellites, uh, sorry, telescopes tend to consume <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of power, yeah. so they might eventually take your satellite down. Uh, so that's the battery there, that's the current, that's the mission operation, so basically you have like, um, when you go through cruise mode, um, so there are different modes of operations. Uh, like you have the satellites, the satellite going in, uh, regularly goes in tumbling, this is called tumbling, right? Yeah. So basically the satellite spins one degree per second. Um, so it doesn't receive, so the satellite as, as, as you see, as you saw in the images, is basically a large CPU box, something like this, a very old CPU box. Um, and it has some thermal protection, but um, if you basically rest on a single position through uh, the, all, the whole orbit and you get the sun uh, of the light directly to the, the telescope sensor, you can basically concentrate a lot of power into a single point. Yeah. So basically the satellite is running on a tumbling mode, like it spins very slowly, thank you. Um, so that's basically um, this information. The screen is not really projecting very well. So next, basically this, this is a satellite like going like this, it's like spinning, you can see this slide. motion. Yeah. Huh. Oh yeah, that's all also. So um, the satellite has some um, um, uh, a hardware on it that helps uh, the, uh, uh, change the attitude. So basically it grabs the, the earth, it grabs from the earth field and some reaction wheels which are basically like wheels with very, very high precision. Uh, so basically they grab, uh, well, basically that's information you get from the sensors. That's part of information. Those are, the, all of them are uh, attitude components. So those are reaction wheels, gyroscopes, uh, gyroscope refined, uh, magnet talkers. Uh, that's more information. That's actually a TCP, TCP dump running from uh, the, the, the devices that run Debian. Those are literally, you know, uh, ARM uh, devices uh, uh, stock. We just, uh, I think we just compiled the kernel because of some drivers of the, yeah. the uh, ARM uh, uh, chipsets, but it's basically stock. Uh, so that telemetry, yeah, I cannot even see it from here. Well, it's much more information. This is one actual image to, uh, taken from the satellite, the, I think it was the first month, 
the satellite was released, which was uh, like, woo! Um, you can see in here the projection. This is like a, a you know, model. Uh, Backsat is the name that is uh, like distributed uh, using the satellite community. It's theta slash Backsat. Backsat. Backsat, yeah, <laughs> that was basically a bug <laughs> satellite, which was kind of fun. Um, so this is the image that is like projected in here. Uh, this is a, like the computerized projection, like ex the expectation, which is literally matching, as you can see. Um, so funny enough, this was, uh, as you can see in a stripe in here, this was the, the Florida pe Peninsula. You can see Cape Canaveral there, Disney, Miami, it's like, you know, the continent is in this direction and goes the, the peninsula like this. Uh, this is another image. Well, the, the, the screen is not really uh, helping us here. This is an image. Uh, this is the, the atmosphere scattering, removing the, the atmosphere scattering. So, um, and we are just finishing. Um, we realize uh, that this is kind of fun once you are talking about it, but it's not fun when you're getting all the images there. We found that uh, indeed uh, the world does really have clouds. Um, every fucking time. Yeah, <laughs> every single fuck <clears throat> time yes, uh, we were getting images. <laughs> it's like there were a lot of them, like, no, really. No, but we uh, mean really. It's like uh, every single time it, go, it goes, uh, it went through very interesting position for us. Uh, we were like, you know, half or more, more uh, part of the time getting images uh, from clouds. So uh, that's basically it. Uh, as, in, as we mentioned, this was basically uh, something we found uh, fun doing and we wanted to share with you so you have an idea of what uh, a truly universal operation system is. Basically those are Debian running on, uh, on, on what they are called single board computers, but they are literally uh, the computers as like this uh, desktop or wherever, or a server. Uh, they have very, very, very slight uh, uh, like customizations on the kernel, and most, mostly, well, and the system D by that time. Uh, but uh, they are basically stock uh, Debian's there. So, I mean, uh, at least for me, it gives, you a, it gives me a perspective of what I do in Debian really helps, uh, you know, Build the uh, universal operating system. Okay, so we are out for questions. Um, if you have any, just raise your hand. Any questions? No questions. Yeah. Either it's oh, Over there. there we go. It, is, it was too good or too bad. Uh, very interesting talk. Uh, are you, you putting updates regularly, for example, when new point release goes, or are you on some different mode of updating software there? Uh, so, you want to talk about that? Yeah, we upload uh, weekly uh, updates to the satellite, but uh, the satellites uh, live for three years orbiting, so we just uh, launch with the WISI and they and it go down with we see. Yeah, <laughs> so basically one of the, that's, that's actually true. So one of the things of having a low orbit satellite is that it will eventually get drowned by the Earth uh, field and get literally burned. So uh, maybe it will happen three years, maybe more, maybe less. But um, as you might guess, uh, security updates are not really that mandatory. <laughs> 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 they are yeah, really, no. really welcome. I mean, we. The, we do upgrades in terms of uh, software. For example, the other day we uploaded for some of the metric collecting systems uh, uh, a Python uh, LXCM compression system, a compression algorithm, um, which basically for us is great because we have an attendant upgrade there. We just put the file in some place uh, as the that diagram. We just um, put a file there, it gets uh, uh, written on the NVRAM, then it gets uh, pushed through uh, the Debians, the Debians build 
if they have to build, they build the package. Otherwise, if they recognize they are a dev, there's a dev, they just distribute it. They deploy them through the whole uh, the whole our devices. So we do perform uh, updates. Yeah. No questions. No questions. Ah, oh. <laughs> two questions. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what are roughly the specifications of one of those uh, of various uh, RAM and disk and so on? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it has uh, one gigahertz of the, the, the clock, uh, one gigabyte of RAM, and 1512 of uh, flash uh, built in on the single chip. Um, we have a micro SD card. For basically for bootloaders, right? No? Yeah, 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 for, yeah. yeah for it's small storage. Yeah. yeah. Um, micro SD card with the 8 gigabyte uh, for. Yeah, those, are, those are, aren't the regular SD cards. They are like, um, are, is that five? Yeah. Okay. Uh, those are like, uh, they are very similar uh, SD. Uh, instead, they are like, Enterprise SS, SS, micro SSD, something like that. So they are, they have like these correction algorithms. So, like as a summary, it's not really the mission of the company to build huge and very very HA uh, tolerant th systems because you are going to deliver one uh, every you know a couple of months. So we do have redundancy in very specific areas that are critical and that they tend to fail. Uh, for example, this is our this. Those are the um, basically all, where all the computing happens. Uh, this chip, the one there, has uh, which is called uh, a TMS. Uh, the TMS is a, a computer that very small computer. It runs free RTOs. Uh, is basically just for switching on the communications and switching. Uh, uh, well, uh, it controls thermal and yeah, power. it controls thermals. Uh, it, it turns on heaters. The satellites go from uh, minus 20 or minus 30 degrees to uh, 80. So uh, some parts of the satellites are very critical in terms of temperature, like the batteries. If you expose the batteries to, let's say, uh, I think Carsa told me like yes. 10 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. So if you if you expose the batteries, which are uh, lipo, um, lipo is that correct? Yeah. Um, if you Did expose you the batteries, it? sorry. No. Um, if you expose the batteries to less than 10 degrees, the uh, life expectancy shortens down like half in a month. So they have a, like, you know, heater stuff that basically makes the whole temperature of the satellite go nice and easy. Um, and those are like uh, part of the... the well, I, actually, we made tests uh, on radiation of every single piece uh, of that, yeah, including uh, the micro SD card. Right. So one of the things we do on the satellites that are Part of the uh, you know regular space industry tests are go through um, um, uh, as he mentioned uh, radiation tests because one of the things you cannot avoid is physics there so radiation happens and once you are you know at 600 uh, kilometers you get really radiated irradiated so we do test them uh, for radiation it's one of the things we do from the standard industry as as shielding stuff like you know really you cannot avoid but. Those things aren't prepared for space. They, we build them, we design them, we test them before in the other months, and they keep running. And it, they just got one year running, which for us was like, you know, celebrating thing. But uh, yeah, we test them, and they're running. Yeah. We have one minute, uh, one question. I just want to ask, uh, the wind, uh, do we have one, time, one question, Mark? Yes, yes I, I just want to ask. Can we write emails to the email address that we? <laughs> oh, yeah, we yeah, of course. <laughs> Actually, if you there, there's something uh, uh, our CEO Hera tends to say that if you can break into a satellite, you are definitely directly hired. <laughs> so it's like yeah. Uh, Maybe we have time for one more question. Maybe one more question. There we go. <laughs> um, your system is quite limited in the space, so the question is, is a minimal Debian installation no. uh, small enough, or um, oh. would you like to see a more um, compressed, small Debian that you can use? 
No, no, we, we built uh, an image uh, from Bootstrap and then put the, all the packages that we need. So which, we also, which actually is uh, the Bootstrap. I mean, literally the Bootstrap run, the output of that, we put it on, on the, the SD cards. The EB Bootstrap. Right. The tool of Debian. Yeah. The uh, one you regularly use for, for building. We have uh, eight gigabytes for each overall. So uh, the root file system is uh, two yeah. gigabytes. Yeah, and, and with uh, mostly everything like from the, the platform. So it's like those are usually used for a uh, platform mission. So basically they do stuff around the, the telescope or they perform tasks. And uh, so the raw images are huge. I mean, huge. It's totally impossible to download them. And some operations they perform are uh, built, uh, are post uh, productive there. Like once uh, they got the image, they are post productive. And eight gigabytes turned to be like, you know, more than enough in terms of handing those images, compressing them, and then do some stuff and push it to F. Uh, yeah, so they are actually, uh, I think, a little bit more than 50% used, which is crazy. I mean, okay, thanks. You can afford two units, two emu for SDK. Yeah, actually, the question, the, the mentioning was that we can afford to have Q emu running there. Yeah. <laughs> well, not running. Well, ru it can run, but. Yeah. It's just for recovering uh, file systems, <laughs> not the, it's a tool for recovering file systems. Okay. okay, thank you all for coming.